time for another challenge. This time, rubbish wood. What's the difference between rubbish wood and scrap wood? I suppose that's where you find it. These suspiciously placed items in the bin are going to be a very different project for me. It's small, it's fiddly, it might not work, but we'll see how it comes out because it's just for me. Don't do that very often. Here we go. These super thin veneers of Jarrah and Walnut were sent to me a while ago by my mate Shape and Sawdust over in WA and I've been wondering what to do with them. I've had this project in mind, so combining them with my nondescript eucalypt here, which I'm going to use the super glue trick to stick down to my router thicknessing sled, I want to make some bookmarks and hopefully put a few new skills to the test. Not sure exactly what this eucalypt is, it could be black butt, could be tallow wood, but all I know is I need it thinner. That is a 7 eighths of an inch or 22 millimeter router bit, and we're going to use the sled to take these as low as I dare. The problem is that the router puts a lot of pressure, so even with very fine passes, it's scary taking it down too thin, and I need these very thin. They're starting at 6 mil ish or about a quarter of an inch. I then figured out I could go long ways, and that saved me quite a lot of time. By the end of it all, the router had gotten me down to about an eighth of an inch, or three mils, a little bit under actually. That's not too bad, but that was as thin as I dared to go. So that was my light colored wood prepared. Now I had to do something with those veneers of walnut and jarrah. Right, so I need to cut a lot of repeatable, same size-ish kind of strips of very thin wood, so I'm going to build a jig. In fact, I've just spent more time developing this jig than I think it's going to take me to cut the pieces, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? It's also all rubbish wood. Let's take a look. Okay, so here is my custom bench hook for this repeatable task. First up, I've cut a slot in here with the router. This is where my finished pieces will fall through at the end of it. They're going to need a couple of fences, starting with this one. We're just going to brad nail this together. This is my guide block. It's been routed out at the bottom and it is just thick enough that my very thin veneer pieces will fit underneath there. It's going to go here. Now importantly, that's going to have a kerf line there, so I need to secure it on both sides. Cool. That's better. This little one is going to be for the first cross cut to cut them down to a six centimeter length. So I want the middle of that block roughly about there. Last thing to do is to tack down the bench hook underneath and then carefully mark out and cut those curves for my saw. A straight backed saw would obviously be much better for this, but I don't have one. And the flexible blade is useful sometimes, but in this case was a disadvantage, hence the need for this jig. So the first little hook, being a pull saw, needs to be in front of me, like this. And I could cut down my thin veneers into approximately 60mm strips, so they'd fit into the next part of the jig. The walnut had some decent thickness to it, but that jarrah before, it was really thin. It was going to be my problem piece. And here's a bit of the light eucalypt. It took a while to make the jig, but seriously, it sped things up so much. Once I had my 60mm long sections, I could start to feed them through the long kerf, and they would drop lovely into a little Craig screw container, which I clamped underneath, collecting them, and some sawdust, which would be handy too. I was really quite happy with how this performed. However, before I could move on to the next stage of assembly, I needed to do something mildly tedious. Sand every single edge of every single piece so that when I glued them together, they had a better chance of sticking. So I just spray adhesive a bit of 180 grit sandpaper down onto a piece of MDF and settled in for a bit of rubby rubby action. The best bit is after I'd done the long sides and collected more of the sawdust for later on, I then got to do the short sides. If 
finally the end grain was sanded and you can see what I had in mind. This is the pattern that I came up with using the long solid piece as a backer for my bookmarks and all of those pretty veneers will make up the front. A bit of staggered gluing and some blue tape to hold it all together. I had some left over so this was a bit of an afterthought but I put some sticky tape down and I'm using that to hold one side nice and steady. And I glued three of the bits of Jarra at the ends to make it an equal thickness. We'll see if this works. I started by clamping off, but then decided just to brick it instead. The next day I could come back and very, very gingerly pull off all that blue tape. And you can see my next problem. All of those veneers are different thicknesses. And if I hit that with a regular sander, I could shatter the whole project. So I had to come up with a little bit of a creative sanding solution here. Enter the world's dodgiest drum sander. I won't go into details here because I've actually made a whole video of it. And once it's finished edited, I'll put the flag up in the top corner and you'll be able to watch that too. I was quietly pooping bricks uh, before running this through. Even after having done a tester, it was more eccentric than a reclusive billionaire. And I had no idea if this was going to work. I, I really thought it, it wouldn't. But much to my surprise and ecstatic joy, I was soon getting lovely little reams of sawdust pouring off the high points of my bookmark. The walnut and the eucalypt, they were up top, and the very, very thin jarrah was what I was trying to get down to. I wasn't going to make it all the way because some of those pieces were way for thin, but we could at least even it out, and I just couldn't believe how well this worked. It's such a dodgy jig, it's, uh, yeah, well, you can see what it is, but it did get the job done. And I was able to make not only a 60 grit roller, the yellow one, but a 180 grit roller in the white one too. It was just very, very satisfying to watch this work. Kind of needed a really good dust mask, but there you can see the results of how thin I was able to get it. The sawdust saved from early on. Kevin jumped in with a bit of PVA and knocking that into those little grooves helped tidy things up a bit. Then I could remove it from its sanding sled, take it back over to my jig and dock off the ends. And then because I'm so paranoid about cutting with this flexible saw, a couple of blocks of MDF helped me chop it in half. And I had two things that looked kind of like bookmarks. However, I wanted them a little bit thinner and that involved doing a rip cut on some very, very thin and fragile material. So I came up with this little cutting block. I set the depth stop on the miter saw so it wouldn't go all the way through. And this worked brilliantly. It gave me some really nice clean edges. Uh, not the safest thing to do. Do make sure that you are careful when rip cutting on a miter saw. But for me, it came out quite nicely. And there were my three almost ready bookmarks. So they had ended up with the backing boards at about three and a half mils, and I thought that's just still a little bit chunky. However, I could take that off the safe side to sand, the back part, which was a solid piece of timber. So hitting it primarily with some 40 grit sandpaper, I was able to take a further mill or 16th of an inch off there. And I even used the wire brush to clean out the gum veins. You'll see why that was important shortly. Once they were at the thickness that I wanted, hand sanding block dirt, just took off the sharp edges and it was time for some sealer, not finish. This is my sanding sealer, which I like to put on all projects that I resin. Yes, we are going to do a little bit of spot filling with some resin here on two of the bookmarks. That stripey one, ooh, that's got something special saved for it. So it was time to break out the Perfect Cast resin from Carbotech, and yes, as usual, I am a Carbotech affiliate, and if you would like to purchase anything from that shop, you can do so using my links in the description below. I would also recommend getting some decent pigments, unlike the crappy ones that I have from eBay. Uh, when these run out, I will most certainly be uh, stepping up to the eye candy, I think. Look, I only needed a mil, but I don't like mixing up less than 10 mils. Two to one resin, and 
Doing anything less than that just makes things tricky. So I'm going to have quite a bit of leftover, but taping things up and spreading it into those gum veins is not only going to stabilize the bookmarks a little bit, but give me a pretty little feature too. So I have done resin before, and that was just a teeny little pore, but this is brand new to me. Kangaroo leather. Apparently it will stick to wood with Type 1 3. I've got plenty of that, so let's try it out. This is pre-tanned, so it should be fairly easy, not a lot to do. I just hope it sticks. I put a fresh new sharp blade in the Stanley knife, lined up my leather, marked it out, and I was actually surprised how easily this cut. I suppose a sharp new blade will do that. A quick sand of the suede side and of the wooden bookmark. Yeah, some great angles there, James, putting the glue bottle right in front of what you're doing. will help them stick together. I probably should have made that a bit more oversized because this is probably going to move when I put the pressure on. Oopsie. I think I've got a mil each side. At least half a mil. The next day I could come back and take out my leather, which seems to have worked well. And you've probably picked by the beanie and thermal that it's not exactly the best temperature for resin in Australia at the moment. So we had to hope for the best. Pulling out the Stanley knife again and I could trim off the perfect amount of leftover leather off all four sides of the bookmark. I got lucky. Very satisfying, this leather work stuff. I might do a bit more of it in the future. The sanding block got broken out again just to clear up the glue edges. And then I delved into Wifey's leather tools and stole this little edging thing in my bobby, whatever it is. Beveler? I don't know. But I've seen Grant and Morley do this all the time, so I kind of thought that I had to. It was also quite fun. It is quite chilly in Australia at the moment, so things got really meta as I had to use the heat generated by me editing the first part of the video being spewed out by my laptop fans to try and cure the resin fast enough to get this project completed. Luckily it seems to have worked and my little testers were nice and hard 48 hours later. Now this is not ideal, the perfect cast should be left for 5-7 to seven days, but fortunately it was hard enough that I could break out my little scraper and clear off the majority of the resin. And while I could tell it was not completely cured, at least there weren't any soft spongy bits tearing out on me. The scraper did most of the work, then 120 grit sandpaper brought it down and I could rework my way back up through the grits to 320 and finish with a little hand sand of the edges. And finally, we've got what I call the two sock method for wax application. Socks. Bit of Gillies Wax, buff on, buff off. No wait, buff on, buff off. Now the good thing with the Carbonara Wax is it's not only great for the wood, it's also good for the leather. Now my leather has been completely pre-treated, but the edges, particularly where I've cut them, they need some protection. But there's one more tool that I've stolen from the wifey He's starting to get into leather work. And that's this little burnishing rod, which you use, I believe, for the edges of the leather. Let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, looks all right. I suppose it helps get the wax in there. I honestly do not know, but it can't hurt. And the good thing with the Gillies wax is you basically buff it off straight away. Of course, the two sock method is all good and well until you remember that you own a Dremel and it's much better for little things like this. Piece of furniture, you wouldn't want to use it, but here it gave me a very lovely, super shiny surface. Take a look at that luster. Beautiful. Now we could get rid of a couple of scraps of paper at least as the bookmarks are put to work in their new home. Well, at least it would be, except they're so good I'm not going to keep them for myself. This rubbish wood is instead going to the three least rubbish women in my life. My mum, my sister, and of course, the beautiful little wifey. 
I hope they enjoyed them, and I hope you enjoyed this rubbish wood project. Thanks to Mark for putting on the challenge. It was jolly good fun.